This week on Rock This, we have live performances and an exclusive interview with you two. My feeling going into this album was I just want to make sure that I've said everything I want to say to the people that I love the most. Looking at my sons, what is the most important thing I can leave them? Cash to buy a car or, or a house or something? Or is it a way of seeing the world? This plus more music and more videos starting right now. We've had a dialectical thing going on with innocence and experience for a while in our band. And it comes from a, a conversation that I sometimes have with what you might call my conscience. This conscience could be called your innocent self, but it's certainly your younger self. And on the tour for Songs of Innocence, we set up this argument between the two selves. And I think it continues on Songs of Experience. We did some things for the first time on this album, things that we'd always promised ourselves we'd do. Our process of recording is very mixed up with the process of writing. We release the record, and then we start rehearsing, and we go on the road, and after six weeks, our producers will come out to check on on this, and, and they will always go, oh, wow, I'd love to record the album now. You guys are playing those songs so brilliantly, confidently, and there's just an energy to them. So on this album, we did exactly that. We went into a rehearsal room and we played the songs again and we tossed around different arrangement ideas. And then we took all of the lessons of, of that process and we brought them back to the album. So we actually re-recorded some elements of the album. Red Flag Day has a sort of bite to it and an energy to it, which came about because of that process. We got the best of both. We got the band sound and that electronic, more 21st century approach. And that visceral energy, I think, is something a band can only create. The Dalai Lama said that you begin your meditation on life by considering death. That's it. So how do you go there? Well, we went there. And it's perhaps excruciatingly embarrassing. But that is what our job is in YouTube. If we have any job, if we don't even have a job, it's not a job. But whatever it is, yeah. the, the thing that we do, we have to be able to go there. You know, and say those simple truisms. My feeling going into this album was, I just want to make sure that I've said everything I want to say to the people that I love the most. And that was a little selfish. Normally I work closer with Edge on the lyrics, but I actually had to go to a very private place. And I was delighted that in that place I found some tragic comedy, like you're the best thing, but I mean, it's funny. I had to think, looking at my sons, what is the most important thing I can leave them? Cash to buy a car or, or a house or something? Or is it a way of seeing the world? What would you say is the opposite of, of fear? Joy. Joy is the opposite of fear. We talk about joy being an act of defiance in the face of, of that sort of darker energy. And our music is, is joyful as, as a point of pride almost, because it's almost the hardest thing to get into music is that joyfulness. Get out of your own way. It's one of the emotions that's hardest to contrive. And you think, oh my God, more and more, you think that's hardly any of that around. I, I love that kind of music, you know, that, that's joyful, but has a little acid drop in amongst the sweetness. That's what we live for. That is our drug of choice. Yeah, if we can get there. Your skin's no covering and resistance. 
Now I started sketching that for my daughter. She's an extraordinary person. We were born on the same day. And so there's a lot of her in me, a lot of me in her. But the more I listen to it, the more I realize you preach what you want to hear. It's, it's kind of a conversation with myself. And if experience has taught us anything now, it's perhaps the biggest obstacle you're going to meet in your life. Not always, but often, is yourself. That's the much harder fight. Ah, it's the usual amount of um, fear of failure that drives us forward. I think we were, weren't really allowing fear to be too big of a theme. Even in the blackout, which is such a dark song, this, it's very uplifting, actually. It's a very positive lyric. The greatest threat is the rise of fear in politics as a weapon. The problem with fear is it makes the division between us and them wider. The defiant thing is not to meet aggression and fear and antagonism with that equal response, but to actually do the opposite, to resist fear. In our lifetime, ever since we were born, it seemed like freedom, equality, fairness was just moving in a positive direction. And that seems to have stopped in the last couple of years. And some very shocking things have happened. We've always had the Ku Klux Klan here in America and racism in America, but they don't even feel they need to wear the silly outfits. They're walking barefaced down the street. That's different. When the lights go out, you throw yourself about in the darkness where you learn to see. I, I think things will come back. It was tough for me in the blackout to write. It's when the lights go out, that's when you learn how to see. In these moments of darkness and despair, that's when we discover who we are. That must be true of politics if it is true personally. I think the young Bono is a bit of a pain in the arse myself. If anything has come with experiences, it's a way of, of negotiating the world that isn't so us and them. We discovered America through rock and roll. It struck me, America is not just a country, it's an idea. Then I thought, it's a sound, isn't it? U2 is always in a dialogue with America. It's a dialogue of Europe and of the world with America, and that's what keeps them relevant. Their determination to make the most of the American myth has them grabbing it by the lapels and saying, say what you mean. Live up to your founding documents. Into the arms of America. You two came to America right as punk was giving way to New Wave. At that time, they were very much an Irish band. Their references were a lot about the struggles of their own country. Then, you two spent some time in the US. Bono and the band started to make those connections. U2's idea of America, it would include Elvis Presley, Bob Dylan, Jack Kerouac, Hattie Smith, Bruce Springsteen, Woody Guthrie, Chuck D from Public Enemy. The Ramones were also huge for us. And Jimi Hendrix. America just felt very alive and worth fighting for through then. When Reagan was elected, people felt quite defeated, quite confused. Uh, how did this happen? I can't believe the news today. Oh, I can't close my eyes and make it go away. It was a very intense moment for people within Bohemia, within the left. In the late 80s, American rock fans needed that space where they could believe in something again that was big enough to accommodate their own dreams on Joshua Tree, on Unforgettable Fire, 
The band is creating these soundscapes that are attempting to evoke what they saw. This romantic vision of freedom moving through the landscape, but also, you know, what's happening in that wide open space. There are scary things in the corners. In those classic U2 albums that America fell in love with, America heard itself and in a strange synesthetic way, saw itself. Pride in the Name of Love locates Martin Luther King Jr. as a founder of America. Martin Luther King was such an important figure for us. He refused to respond in kind. And in the end, totally disarmed all the opposition. I mean, I look back and I hear a song like Pride in the Name of Love. I mean, who would scream that at the top of their voice? And then I realized, God, I did that. We did that. The turn for us probably came even as early as Actung Baby, when you realize that the, the hypocrisy of the human heart is where a lot of the trouble in the world starts. And Including our own. Of course. Of course. And, and that, that became the subject. I feel our band has to be fearless. I mean, the what's the point in being in you too? If you don't take on subjects that are embarrassing, you have to look into who you are, what's in the way of progress, and and push through it. On the Zoo TV tour, they started calling the White House live on the stage. Hello, uh, is that the White House? Yes. Hi, c can I speak to, uh, to President George Bush, please? He's not available, sir. What's our last night? Hello? In the 90s, Bono is seeing himself as effective on a global scale, able to move into these areas of power. Always in his heart, he has this mission to change the terrible inequities. In an age of endless polarization, Bono essentially out-conservatived the conservatives. Others may try to dodge the issue and squirm and flip-flop, but not this senator. Bono approaches Jesse Helms saying, I've read the Bible too, and if you can't get on the right side of this everyday holocaust, you do not have God on your side. He accomplished what no one else seemed to be able to accomplish using his own celebrity as currency. I think it's about time that I made a confession that I have been too lax too long and doing something really significant about AIDS. In the face of this great tragedy, I think the music is everyone's best shot. We now know that people, when running from war, will risk the most treacherous journeys, all for the promise of a better life. Aid in 2016 is not charity. It is national security. In our lifetime, ever since we were born, it seemed like freedom, equality, fairness was just moving in a positive direction. And that seems to have stopped in the last couple of years. And some very shocking things have happened. I really believe in America. I believe that it's, it's becoming it, itself. I, I don't think it's arrived yet. All great ideas need to be reinvigorated from time to time. They all atrophy. We're no longer just talking about music. We want to know, you know, wh wh where is this mythic America? Is it, is it going up in smoke? No, that's not agonized, that's organized. Let's see what happens when there's a bit of resistance.